Now today, we're going to be painting this great rooster, and it's a fun, it's just a fun painting on its own, but we've kind of woven into this piece some fun little techniques that just make painting more interesting. And it's not always just about using the brush, uh, so we're gonna be using some cling wrap today. So let's take a look at what we're gonna be using for this project. We're gonna be using the ultramarine blue, uh, the turquoise, we have a bright orange, a chrome orange or a cadmium orange. Um, we want a medium yellow, but I've also thrown in a very light yellow. So a lot of people use the cadmiums, um, but some of the newer yellows, the brighter ones are great. A nice bright red. I'm using a pie roll or p roll or parole or red red, <laughs> but very red. And then we have a black and we have the white as well. And we're going to use the large brush first of all to place our color on here and then we're going to use the cling wrap to actually manipulate that color. So as usual we're going to get the brush a little bit damp. We don't use a lot of water in acrylic paint. I just use a little bit sometimes depending on the, the weather and how the, the paint is working. So the first thing I'm going to do is pick up the ultramarine blue and I'm going to place that around. Now as you can see I've based my canvas in red because I want that to be able to peek through at different places. So I'm gonna start with that color on already and I let it dry and then I'm putting on some of this lovely turquoise and then some white. Don't just sort of put them all in, in kind of sort of sections or segments, kind of scatter them through a little bit, but most of the mixing will be done with the cling wrap. And then I'm picking up a little bit of the lighter yellow, which as you can see when I put it on there, is pretty transparent. Now the trick to doing this, of course, is that you need to put enough paint on there that it'll actually move. Because if you don't put enough on, um, and if you're doing this at home, if it sinks straight away in, you need more paint. So I'm putting the cling wrap on and I'm smoothing it over. This is better done on the table, which we'll do in just a little minute, but I wanted you to see this little bit. So I'm pulling it off, and as you can see, it's on the cling wrap. So I'm moving it, and then I'm moving it, and I just keep moving it over and over again. So I'm picking up and transferring those colors, and then it's really up to you which is gonna be the dominant color. You know, in the image that we're working from, the left side is more yellow, the right side is more blue. This exercise really pushes us to let go of control in just this part of the painting. So I'm just going to move some things here so that we can put this down and really go at it because it, there really is some, uh, it's just a whole lot easier when you're working down on the table. Um, it certainly keeps you at a little bit of a distance from your painting, which is also a good, good thing. So now what you'll notice is we're using yellows and blues. And so what's gonna happen is, of course, they're gonna mix, which will mean that you're gonna get some sort of a green happening in there as well. That's why we don't have green on the palette right now, because it's gonna happen anyway. So the background at the top area is sort of a diagonal or straight up and down. It's the uh, giving us the impression that we're kind of in a, maybe in a barn where there's a lot of hay stacked or in a very sunlit um, farmyard actually. And we, it's, this is a lot of fun, very therapeutic. So the thing you will probably have to do is tell yourself when to stop. Um, because a lot of times we get carried away when things are this much fun. And eventually if you don't stop at some point, you're going to end up with a green background which we could have just painted on our own without all of this fun. So now what I'm going to do, it, um, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the aqua, but mostly on the bottom I'm looking for the yellow and white to be dominant. And I'm going to be putting plenty of white on because I want it a little bit lighter. And on this side of things, I'm actually, again, still using the same piece, which is fairly easy to find out when you get it on your hands. And I'm gonna go across or horizontal so that my stroke and color have now changed slightly. And I'm gonna just keep going. And as you can see, depending on where you put it down or pick it up from, depends on what color you get. And you actually do get a really good 
blend. It is really a fun, fun way of doing this. And then when I've kind of got it looking the way I want, let's just do a few more. You can see how much I'm, I'm leaving some red in the background. And it really pops it. The reason uh, the red works is, we, well, we do, of course, use it in the uh, rooster, but it's the complement to the green that it inevitably will show up on your canvas. So it kind of makes things a little more exciting. Now I'm just using and pouncing what's left of color on the saran wrap. And I'm gonna put this back up on the easel so you can see. Let me just make sure I'm not gonna lose it. So I've got all of this color up on my saran wrap and I can pounce a little bit if I want to create a nice soft blend in there. So I'm kind of liking that. If you would like it to go a little lighter, let me put my colors back. There we go. Um, you can put a few more up here if you like. You can go over the top. It's, you know, if it's good weather and it's drying pretty quickly, that won't take long. Don't do this if it's still too wet. What'll happen is you'll get muddy, a lot of mud happening instead of all of this exciting texture. You'll just get kind of a muddy look. Anytime you're working on a piece and it's not working out the way you want, the tendency is to want to fix it right away. Um, I really strongly suggest you let it dry or you dab at it with a paper towel to remove what you can, let it dry, then try to find the resolve to the problem. That will sort of, that will help you not continue to grow the muddiness. You'll be able to contain it and fix it. Great. So this is drying pretty quickly. And I'm gonna use my fabulous white chalk to uh, draw the outline, just the outline of the bird. I'm gonna pay particular attention to that shape between the neck and the tail, because that's gonna tell me right away if I'm creating you know, the sort of rooster that I'm looking for. And then we'll, we'll talk about his belly, because sometimes we get some bellies on this one. So I'm gonna drop down about an inch and a half over here on the left, coming in about, again, two inches from the left. And I'm gonna drop this down into a nice U shape like so. You want this kind of tight. This area in here is the negative space that I'm looking at when I compare it to a reference that I'm using. If this space looks very similar to the one that I'm using, I know I'm on the right track. And I'm just gonna give myself uh, a bit of a curve there. And then I'm gonna do this in white paint so that you can see, but you can use white chalk because it's much um, easier to erase. So this will help you see it a little clearer. Go. And I'm not going to draw the whole uh, tail because there's a lot of openness to the tail. We want the openness in there. And I just, so I just want to kind of give myself some, a few lines to follow. A tip when you're using these smaller brushes, you do need to put some water on it so that the, the, the paint will flow to the end and it's much, it's kind of usable then like, a, like an ink. Now, contrary to some people's beliefs, birds have small heads because they don't have a big brain. So don't give them the human head. We so often do. And then I'm gonna drop and slightly open up that line. And then I'm gonna kind of almost cross down flat straight here and then straight up. Uh, now the reason we use it, we would use chalk to do this is that you can erase things when you step back to look at it and you go, oh my gosh, he's eaten too much grain. I need to give him a diet. Close that down. So we're gonna do the foreleg, the front leg, which is a triangle, and then the back leg, which is also a triangle. Now the bird's legs go back like they do here, and then they go forward. So let's just go forward here, one, two, three. Make sure that his legs are long enough to hold him up, and they wanna be somewhat central so that he doesn't fall backwards or forwards. You wanna sort of look at it and use your instinct to see whether it's, um, you know, lining up correctly. So it doesn't look like your, your roost is gonna to topple forward. So then I'm gonna just do the small beak. And in this case, I'm just gonna do a slightly curved triangle. Right there. And then we're going to be use, doing his comb. 
We get all kinds when we do this at the studio um, as class. We get everything from the Elvis Presley rooster to a very well coiffed one. And then um, his waddle. We're going to come up into where the cheek area would be, which is about halfway along where his beak is. If you follow that right through, about halfway down, give him a little fat cheek, and then his uh, waddle comes like that. So as you can see, it isn't a it isn't a full-on oblong or oval. It is sort of larger on top and smaller towards the bottom. And there we have the outline of our rooster. I'm now going to switch to a middle brush, medium sized brush. This one is an eight, but I would say, you know, depending on the size of your canvas, uh, six would be great too. I like using bright brushes uh, because they're a very versatile brush and they deliver the paint really well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm picking up just black and I'm going to fill the whole body in with black. Now when you get to the tail, so as you can see, I'm coming up and over. Now when you get to the tail, I want you to just sort of pull it up and then just let your brush leave the canvas towards the end of the stroke. What will do, what happens there is that you're going to get what you would want, which is some nice open um, feathers. Now all of the feathers aren't all going all together in one direction. They get kind of messy in the barnyard and it makes for a better painting as well. So sometimes you might want to find a couple of these kind of flicking out a little bit. It makes it a much more interesting tail. Of course, as it comes down towards the body, it is thicker there. And stepping back to look and see so that things look cohesive and work. You may cut your tail off too soon and look kind of funny. So I'm gonna put my all of the black on. Now we're using acrylic paint as you know which dries pretty fast under the lights here um, and during the summer of course dries pretty quickly but I think you'll find very um, that it takes a very small window of temperature change and humidity change for the paint to start drying slower which can be to your advantage, of course. And doing the back leg and some feet. One, two, three. You can do four if you'd like, but I'm only sort of going for a fun rooster. I, maybe his other feet are all hiding in the toes, I should say, are hiding in the hay. And there we go. Rooster. Cleaning my brush. And I'm going to wipe it a little bit dry to make sure most of that black is out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the ultramarine blue with a little tiny bit of white, mixing that together. And I think it gets a little grayed out, so I'm going to add some more of that turquoise back in. And I'm keeping the paint towards the top of the brush. I'm not filling the brush up. I really am just keeping it at the top so that I can control it better. And I'm going to throw in some more highlights into that tail. And we'll work our way towards the lighter ones. And the reason we're doing this is a lot of blacks are either a warm black or a cool black. And in this case, we're assuming he's a cool black. And it's picking up some of the black because I'm not quite dry. But I'm going to mix some more of that color. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to use the blue to outline really lightly that front leg and his belly all the way down through to that leg. As you can see, it's coming through there. And maybe throw in a couple more here on the tail. So we're starting to see the rooster develop here. 
and I'm going to give him a little bit more in the belly because we still want him to be a black rooster but he does need to have some definition so underneath the belly and then again on that back leg I'll take some of that paint off and use that just to stretch it across just to give it a little bit of a color change so we can see that the belly is there I'm going to just go straight in for turquoise here let's try that there we go and a little soft blend of the blue not too not too strong there so while that's drying I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to add the red to the cone and the wattle and depending on the red you're using some reds are more transparent than others so let's see how this one goes because you may need to do two layers I like the first layer to be a little darker because then it gives me two reds instead of one big blob of bright red. So as you can see, that's picking up some of the black, which is really nice. It creates a darker red. And uh, you know, it's great to let the color do some of the work for you, it really is. Filling in the black and the red. So as you can see, I'm not trying to get it to the finished result on the first time my brush hits the canvas. I'm gonna let things develop because I may wanna use whatever happens on there underneath because I know I can fix anything that isn't working. All right, so let's look at the mane. I call it the mane and the saddle. I don't know if that's what they're really called, but we're gonna use it that. So with the saddle, it is mostly the orange and bright yellow. And although they're all the same three colors, orange, yellow, and white, the mane has mostly of more of the white showing and the saddle has more of the orange yellow showing. So let's start with that great cadmium or um, in this case it was a chrome orange. And I'm coming into the base um, or where the saddle at the top meets there. Now it's gonna be a, a, a stroke that's kind of curved. Again, have your brush leave the canvas at the end of the stroke so it picks up. And it's really up to you. I, I'm gonna have him have a nice long plumage. And it can come up over into the, over the um, tail it adds a little bit more realism to have that overlap because nothing uh, on the rooster is going to be perfectly in line. Not with what he does on the barnyard. Mm -hmm. Putting that down. Now I'm going to put a few, just a few, up here. Just so they can poke out if I want to. And now I'm going to pick up the yellow and I will also put, I'm using the medium <clears throat> yellow first and I'm just going to put a little bit in around his face and his beak let a little of that black show give yourself some nice Farrah faucet hair but I am going to pick up some white and I'm going to mix it in with my light yellow so that it gets much lighter and by putting the white in, I'm taking some of the transparency out so that when I do apply it, it's not gonna, you're not gonna see as much of that black unless the black is wet. There you go, so you see how much brighter that is. Now I'm gonna use a lot of it here too. But I still want the orange to show. And in this case, I'm not really worried about that orange blend. But see, I'm leaving the brush off the canvas when I get finished with the stroke. I'm gonna now use a very small brush that, this one is like a two or a zero size, pointed at the end. And I'm going to pick up that bright yellow that I just mixed with white. And I'm going to put a little of that into the beak. Let some of that other yellow and black show so that's not this solid piece. Let all those little colors do their thing. And if it makes you nervous to do that, step away from your piece when you've done it, before you edit it, before you touch it again. Step away and have a look because the effect will work from, away, from the distance, which is where it's supposed to work from. Okay. Now we're going to, we're just trying to give that a little bit of time to dry. So while that's happening, I'm going to go back in with the red 
And some of my red is dried enough now that I can come in and see how much brighter it's gonna stand out against that. But I don't wanna cover it all up. I want some of that dark red to be there too, to make it interesting. There we go. Let's look at his feet while we're waiting for things to dry. When That's what we do as artists, we wait for paint to dry. So we find things to do while paint is drying. It's essentially what art is about. We're going to put some um, lighter color on his legs. So I think I'm going to pick up a little of the orange and touch of white, which will kind of gray it down a little. And just very lightly over that um, black, just kind of, you can even use your finger to smear it down. Just to soften the black really is all we're trying to do. Not trying to get rid of the black, but just to soften it. And you can even put a little on his feet. Or you can put red on his feet, as I've done in the other, which I can do a little bit more of. Just a couple of bits. There you go. Now, I want to put white up here on his mane. So here's some white. I'm going to come back in, putting that white on around the face and dragging it down. a little bit more here. And these brush strokes that I'm doing are really light. There's not a lot of pressure and there's not a lot of blending back and forth. We're really literally just laying color in where we want it to be. And you can use this brush sideways like so or flat depending on what kind of a stroke you would like for your feathers. I need a lot more mane. Ah, picking up that black. All right, so let me throw in a little bit more of the turquoise and white on the tail, we'll put his eye in, and I think we're almost done. That was a quick little painting. So we can use a little bit of that time to throw in some more um, fun tail feathers, and you can even change the direction of the plumage. And I'm gonna just kind of highlight that a little bit more. Now, as far as the eye goes, we're going to use a touch of black and it's just going to go right, if you follow the middle line of the beak up, then the eye just sort of hits right above the waddle. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, it really doesn't. Now, if you can, you just get a tiny touch of white on there and you'll put a little speck in there. You don't want a lot. If you find that you get too much white and you get a big blob of white on the eye, let it dry come back with the black around it after. Letting it dry is key. All right, so while again, while that's drying, I want to put a little bit more straw down here so that it looks like, you know, he's standing on and in the straw. So I have my saran wrap again. Ah, don't fall, you didn't. So I've got my yellow and white and I'm going to just sort of place it randomly across there and very quickly because we know it dries kind of quick. Again, pick up the straw and you can kind of bury some of his feet in it to make it look like he's standing in the straw um, if you want to, which I did. Right. looking pretty good and really at the end of the day of this piece just go ahead and take a step back see where you need to add more of anything not a lot of editing on this one but I do want to have a little bit more white here um, that's just for my taste 
and here I could probably throw in a bit of yellow and I wouldn't wouldn't hurt it at all and this yellow happens to be pretty transparent so as you can see it really pops it up and a couple of strokes of yellow in there and I think we have a pretty good looking rooster all right so I hope you've enjoyed doing this piece with me and take your time and use some things around the house to see what kind of impression they make on your canvas for the backgrounds. It's, it's really a fun, it's not just for kids. So I hope you've enjoyed this with me and I hope you'll join us next week with another step-by-step -step painting. This is what we're going to be doing next week. So we're going to be using, uh, doing pine cones and pine needles. Um, you're going to be using a burnt sienna and a raw umber as well as a yellow ochre and white a little bit of yellow in there and of course a hooker's green and the background we're using both the um, um, ultramarine blue and the turquoise with white to create a varied effect on the background so i hope you'll join us next week and this will look great in your cabin mm -hmm.